This video will provide you with a step-by-step -step instruction on how to assemble a typical sealed harness. For this instruction video, we will use the TDK22 harness. Before installation can begin, various tools and hardware are needed. See the tooling required list for the tools you will need for installation. To make sure none of the parts are missing, open the harness kit and inventory all components. If a component is missing, ask the trainer for a replacement. A complete list of all of the components can be found in the TDK22 kit inventory list. The TDK22 harness kit contains 30 different items. You can review these on the parts list and refer back to the list during assembly. To begin the installation, first, preheat a Steinel heat gun fitted with a PR25 reflector. Adjust the temperature setting to 420 degrees centigrade. Allow the gun to reach the required temperature. This takes approximately 90 seconds before installing any components in the training kit. To ensure the best possible bond between the molded part and the cable jacket, Degrease the cable jackets in the area where the molded part will recover onto the cable using isopropyl alcohol, approximately 30 millimeters. Next, abrade the cable jacket thoroughly in the same area with 100 grit emery cloth. The whole surface of the cable jacket should be abraded removing any print on the cable jacket. Remember to remove loose particles from the abraded area using a dry tissue and do not use a solvent wipe. Closely check to ensure sufficient cable jacket has been abraded to incorporate the strip length requirement. Make sure to avoid abrading any braid that may be exposed. Next, position the molded part over the harness breakout and then heat it uniformly by starting from the center and moving outwards towards each outlet one at a time. Heat must be applied evenly around the molded part to recover evenly and prevent scorching. Ensure the part is fully recovered onto the cable legs. It may be necessary to reheat the area between outlets until the required shape has been fully formed. For best results, the molded part should be installed in a continuous operation. Look for evidence that adhesive is present between the outlets and cable jacket. Next, slide the Tynell lock ring over the exposed braid on the P1 leg. Flare the end of the exposed braid and position the Tynell lock adapter so that the flared braid covers the braid and Tynell lock ring landing on the adapter. Next, slide the Tynell lock ring over the braid and Tynell lock adapter landing, pushing the ring forward as far as it will go. Then grip the Tynell lock ring in the electrodes of the resistant heating hand tool, ensuring that at least one spot of thermochromic paint on the ring is visible. Avoid touching the adapter with the electrodes. Squeeze the tongs, then push the start switch to activate the electrodes. Observe the thermochromic paint closely and when it turns black, release the foot switch. Release the pressure on the tongs. Make sure the Tynell lock ring is recovered and then use scissors or small diagonal cutters to neatly trim the braid strands back to the adapter shoulder.
Next, locate the Raycam BNC RBD50 connector and separate into the four components. Slide the black shrink tubing over the large black coax cable. Then slide the pre-stripped cable into the connector until it bottoms out. Gently hold or support the connector during heating so it does not change position on the coax cable. Position the inner solder ring in the reflector. Heat until the solder melts, flows and wets to the cable center conductor. Move the connector butting the hex flange against the reflector. Heat the solder shield until it collapses and solder melts, flows and wets to the cable outer shield. Remove from the heat and let the assembly cool before screwing the inner body to the hex nut. Slide the black shrink tubing forward over the solder shield and nut. Heat until the tubing shrinks down on the cable insulation and the adhesive melts. Allow the assembly to cool down before handling. Find the PCB terminator and identify the small black coax cable. Then slide the pre-stripped cable into the B04614N terminator until it bottoms out. Gently hold or support the terminator during heating so it does not change position on the coax cable. Then place the terminator in the reflector and heat until the solder melts, wets and flows. Allow the terminator to cool before handling. Find the solder device, the pin contact and the cable and slide the solder device over the stripped end of the cable centering on the exposed braid and heat by centering the terminator in the center of the reflector. Heat until the solder melts, flows and wets. The outer sleeve must be recovered tightly over the ground lead and cable. Allow the assembly to cool down before handling. Slide the twisted pair contact over the prepared cable. Using the repair wand, place the solder contact into the reflector and heat until both the inner and outer solder rings melt, flow and wet to the cable conductors. Allow the contact to cool before handling. Slide the power contact over the 18 gauge wire. Using the repair wand, place the solder contact into the reflector and heat until the solder ring melts, flows and wets to the cable conductor. Allow the contact to cool before handling. Next, find the splice D436-37. Place the sleeve on the wire to be terminated before crimping the D436 splice and crimp one side of the crimp barrel on the short piece of the wire using the AD1377 crimp tool. Then slide the three inch piece of the wire into the opposite side of the crimp barrel and again crimp with the AD1377 tool.
Next, slide the insulating sleeve of the splice over the completed crimp and recover the sleeve. Heat until the sealing rings flow out the ends of the sleeve. Allow the assembly to cool down before handling. Crimp the Duraseal ring terminal onto the 3 inch wire that was previously crimped to the harness assembly using the AD1522 crimp tool. Allow the assembly to cool down before handling. Using a common screwdriver, loosen the two screws on the cable clamp of the connector. Find the side entry bushing and position around the seven wires under the cable clamp. Reassemble the cable clamp with the SEB bushing providing strain relief to the wire bundle. You have now completed assembly of a typical sealed harness using the TDK-22 kit. Contact your TE connectivity representative to schedule a hands-on training session.